the plays the thing with your host Judy Sleed special guest John Hobrick graphic designer and painter brought to you by Taylor Michelle Cohn and NQ.com and Ingrid Lemmy and now here's Judy 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 Yes, here I am again. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. And today I have a good friend as my guest, John. And uh, I have known John for a few years, but I really didn't know him. So that's why I asked him to come on the show so we could get better acquainted. Great. <laughs> and uh, you have, I didn't know all that. You are so talented. You have all these beautiful paintings here. Thank you. And. Uh, where are you from? Originally, uh, I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and that's where I grew up, uh, in Minneapolis and also outside of Minneapolis in a small town, which was about 30 miles southwest of the Twin Cities. Yes, and, and I, you gave me some materials you read about you, and you started to paint or draw when you were two years old. That's right. I started to draw when I was two. Um, my parents put up a little table in our kitchen and I would sit at this table and draw and color and draw on the wall and take off the, <laughs> the wallpaper and you know all sorts of things that kids do but I had this little table up until I was about six years old. And do you remember what was the first picture you did when you were two? <laughs> um, I can't remember that far back but just recently my mother told me I did a drawing of a friend of hers who was over one afternoon and I must have been about three years old and I gave it to her and uh, my mother said it was a pretty good likeness. So. Really? Yes. Well, you, you are a prodigy then. Well, I don't know. Yes, you must be. <laughs> Most kids don't even know how to hold a pencil right, at that right, age. Right, right. And then uh, at your uh, 12th birthday you got your first paint check, yes. a paint set. <laughs> right, a set of oil paints that I had asked mm -hmm. for, yes, and then I started oil painting yeah. after that for several years, and then mm -hmm. when acrylics came along, I worked in acrylics for quite a few years, um, maybe 15 to 20 years in acrylics, and then started in oils again about 10 years ago. And did you go to any, do you have any formal training? You went to art school? I went to two years of art school. In yeah. Minneapolis, yes. And then the rest you just develop yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's fantastic because I cannot, <coughs> I just don't know how people make, make all these beautiful pictures. I mean, I just, I can't even draw a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, my talents lay elsewhere because when I see that uh, you were, you started at three, I started <coughs> playing mm -hmm. the piano when I was about four. Right. And uh, it just, you know, went on. I guess these talents show up early in childhood. Right. If the parents want to recognize them. Exactly, it. yeah, and if they're encouraged. And I, I think yes. mine were, and I'm uh -huh. sure yours were too, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we have, of course, everybody in Hamptons knows this dance paper, and one day I looked it up, and I said, oh, I know that guy who did that picture. Right. This, I don't know. Can you see this? And that was last year's cover last of uh, year. 2004, November yeah. 12th. Uh -huh. And uh, down like this, well, anyway, people could get back copies also <laughs> then. Uh, right, right. And uh, you said this was not the first? Uh, no, I've been doing, uh, been on dance covers for the past seven years. At first, um, when we, were, we had just moved out here, we bought a house in East Hampton in 97, then I, pers I wrote a letter to Dan's papers and I sent them some slides and I didn't hear anything. And then a year later, uh, Marion uh, Wahlberg Weiss, the critic, called me and told me that one of the pictures had been selected for a cover and that there would be an interview and I've had one ever since. And now um, I show at Chrysalis uh, fine art in Southampton and they now work with dance papers and uh, send them the 
slides, so now it's taken care of by my gallery. But when I first started to do it, I did it myself and contacted them. So you, sh you just said that you're in, uh, you're in touch with a, a gallery in Southampton? Yes, right. That where they hold their, your paintings, yes. some of your paintings. Yes, I've been with uh, Agnes Ehrenreich, is the owner of Chrysalis Gallery. I've been with her for uh, six years now. It's well, I'm so impressed. Thank you. And you said you have some articles uh, elsewhere, or where else? Yes, uh, in Hampton Cottage and Gardens in uh, July of uh, two years ago, or a year and a half ago, our house was featured. Uh, we had put a studio onto the house, my art studio, and uh, they wrote an article and took pictures of that, and then some of the paintings were also in that article, and also the studio shots were in that article, too. And uh, I had a review this summer in uh, the Southampton paper for the show that I had at Chrysalis this summer, and other mentions in uh, East Hampton Star, The Independent. So you are really famous in the Hamptons? Not really. <laughs> in the Hamptons? <laughs> well, every, after this show, I'm sure you're going to be, you have, going to have a lot of fans. Right, yes, <laughs> I know. Exactly. So have you sold any of your paintings? Oh, well, the gallery has sold a lot of paintings, yes, over the yes. years. Yes, they have. So pretty soon you'll be able to retire. Well, I hope so, Judy, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> you mentioned you have, soon. A, you have a place in uh, Manhattan? Yes, we have an apartment in the city, and we, we rent that apartment, and then we bought a home here, uh, like I said, almost 10 years ago. It was uh, December of, what would that be, 96? Oh, so you, but you're in the city most of the time. I'm in the city Monday through Friday. I'm also a graphic designer, and I have um, my own business. And Your own business? Yes. As a graphic designer? Yes, yes. And then How I... How talented and you are. I, All these things you kept a secret from me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd have nothing to talk about, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I uh, thought you were a professional. Coffee maker. No, <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> For my stint in those days, <laughs> exactly. And um, <laughs> we bought a house here, and um, we come out on the weekends. Every weekend, all year round, we're here. Mm -hmm. So you just came to see me today, especially. Absolutely, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes, I took a you, day off. Are you really yeah. buttering me up? <laughs> 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 so. Um, You've been all this time when you were painting. Have yes. you changed anything at all? Or you do this and that? Or uh, yes, absolutely. Let's look at some of these paintings. Okay. Well, these, the one be here, um, this one over here, is called After the Storm. It's an acrylic painting on canvas. I um, did this a number of years ago, maybe ten years ago. It's a view from a friend's farm back in uh, Minnesota. You can see it's sort of very indicative of the Midwest. It's rolling with the cornfields. But being an acrylic painting, uh, acrylics by nature dry very quickly. They dry within 20 to 30 minutes, per se. So they're a very immediate thing. But what they did allow me to have is a lot of control over the medium itself. And so, I could actually get in and very realistically paint trees because the paint would dry, I could build upon it. So it was a little bit more, I want to say restrictive in, in uh, contrast to working in oil painting, but for me it was more uh, exacting, I guess mm -hmm. is what, I'm, what I mean by that. So this is a, one of my favorite paintings, I've, I've always kept it, I've never shown it. Not for sale. Not for sale. NFS, mm -hmm. yes, and so, NFS. <laughs> yes, and it's um, also, you know, it's a, a place of, that my friends live and uh, just has a special meaning to me. And the one behind me is also a, an acrylic on canvas. It's uh, called Down the Road. It's from a photograph I took in Palm uh, Springs, California. It's not your car? It's not my car. It was oh. just a... a <laughs> Cadillac that was sitting by the side of the road. And for years when I did these uh, acrylic paintings, I also did a lot of paintings of cars and trucks, but older models. I was very interested in um, that time, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, early 60s, and uh, did a lot of paintings of movie theaters and diners and signage, things like that. And so that painting was... Uh, 
And that also is not for sale? Not for sale, no. It's part <laughs> of the Harbrick collection <laughs> of paintings. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of the last acrylic paintings I did before I started working in oils. And for me, anyway, I feel it's one of the ones that I, I got very, very close to the technique I wanted to. I wanted it to, to be very photorealistic, uh, say like Richard Estes. Um, and I thought I achieved it, and it's something you I just did. I just wanted. Looks like a photograph. Yeah, thank you. So it's a painting I wanted to keep because after years of working and studying, it's at the pinnacle of what I wanted. Basically. Great. So, yeah. are you saying it took you a long time to do that one painting? That one did take a long time. The the acrylics would take over a hundred hours. They could take that long. 100, 110 hours to produce. I mean, you just figured this out. How many days would that be? <laughs> it depended on my schedule, of course. <laughs> you just it's, kept it in your studio, and every yes. time you felt, you just... Right. Well, I pretty much would work, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Throw paint at it. Um, uh, but uh, I would paint at night when I'd get home from work. I'd paint on the weekends. Uh, at one point in my life, I was uh, freelancing as a graphic artist for three days a week, I had four days to paint, so I produced a lot of work at that time, so. Great, now yes. I see this uh, This is one cottage. is, yes, this one is called um, Surf's Up. It's an oil painting. Uh, it is a picture I took down at the Jersey Shore, Long Beach Island, actually, mm -hmm. where uh, my partner's family had a home for 25 years, and we would go down once a summer to see his family at their beach house. Mm -hmm. And this, I just liked the look of these houses. They're very reminiscent of uh, the kind of houses that were in the town that I grew up in. So they, I identified with that. But this is an oil, and as you can see, the style became a little bit looser. And uh, also a little bit eerier, too, I think. Eerier. Yeah. How so? Uh, no people, shadows, oh, yes. right? Yeah, it does look like uh, like a playhouse. Yeah, they're a little moodier, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like yes, nobody's around. Yes. No, they're all at the beach, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. It looks like a beach house and everybody's at the beach. Yeah, everybody's at the beach, yes. Hence yes. the name, yes. And this is also belongs to your collection. No, this one is actually a, a piece that's for sale. Oh, really? How much? Uh, probably twenty-five hundred. Twenty-five. That's all. Yes, that's all. Twenty-five hundred. Are you interested? Well, I'll think about okay. it. <laughs> However, yes. I'm sure there's some people out there who are right. more interested than I am, and yes. you could just write in or contact John and right. uh, he'll be happy to, plus shipping, right? Yes, plus shipping, <laughs> yes. exactly. Yes, oh, and this one was really at Chrysalis uh, for a while, uh, a couple of years, and um, I, they just gave it back to me recently for the show, for your uh -huh. show, actually, yes. Now that, now, yes. that's, a, that's art, right? That's art, it's a that's collage. A collage. It's called Georgica. And it does. It's, yes, and it's uh, indicative, I guess, of the east end of Long Island in an abstract format. You have the sea on the, along the bottom and the fields above. Uh, this is a technique I've been doing for probably 25 years. It's a transfer um, from paper, also oil and acrylic, uh, gesso. And um, I do a number of these pieces also in between times doing the realism pieces. They're very relaxing for me. They're very freeing. And I also show these at a uh, gallery, not a gallery, but a friend of mine has a shop in Amagansett called Wayne Schwartz Limited. And my friend Wayne deals in high-end um, antiques and pieces from mid-century, mostly uh, from French designers but also American designers, too. And so this summer, we talked about putting my abstract pieces into his shop. So that's where they are. 
So you have uh, many of those? I have probably right now currently about 14 of those, 14, 14. to 16 pieces. Mm -hmm. I wonder who, there must be some special people who like those kind of things. Yes. <laughs> because, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't know what to do with it. No? Well, no, because, I mean, I look at it and uh, I don't see what you do. Right. What do you see, actually? I mean, you said the, the bottom is the water. Yes. And those are the trees and... And fields. And fields. But in a very abstract way. I wanted to play off the colors that are here mm -hmm. and also uh, base it upon a landscape, but uh, with a little bit of a twist. So do these paintings move as fast as the ones that you could actually identify as something? That's a good question. Uh, the identifiable ones have been shown now, like I said, for a number of years out here. Uh, and also I used to show in Manhattan in Soho at a gallery called Strickoff Fine Art. Uh, but the abstracts I've only recently begun to show, and at least out here. And um, we put them into the shop and we sold one you did. right away, yes. We sold one um, to an attorney from Manhattan. I almost ask you a question. If that person had heavy glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Judy. I'm not joking. <laughs> I know you're a serious artist. It's just, I'm just trying to understand <laughs> yeah, it's well something that I really don't. Right. But it doesn't mean it's not good. Thank you. Yes. Um, now, the one behind you, back to the realism. But this, again, is an oil painting, and it's called The Clearing. That house is in Bridgehampton. Oh, it is? Yes, and it's a, house south, a small house south of the highway in Bridgehampton. And uh, I did this do you one know a few the people? years ago. Well, that's interesting. Actually, I do know. You do know. Know those people, yes. Um, Mm -hmm. It's uh, the sign in front it's of the. It's beautiful. It's Thank you. absolutely Thank beautiful. You, you could you. see the uh, the sun. I mean, it's it's very real. Yes. Very yes. very real. Right. I wanted you to feel like you were coming, say, out of the woods or you know into this clear it is beautiful. They sunlight buy space. This. You know, I they have a son who's an artist, so. But you are better. <laughs> Well, you haven't seen his works. So, you, know, you can't judge it. But it's uh, interesting. Um, it's a fellow that I, I used to work uh, for Jeff Koons for a while, the artist Jeff Koons. And uh, this particular gentleman was also working for him in that studio in Manhattan. He also showed at Strickoff, the gallery I showed at. He also shows at Chrysalis. And mm -hmm. so we've, even though he lives in Michigan and summers out here, We've mm -hmm. sort of had this connection for a couple of years mm -hmm. with different parts of our lives at different galleries. So it's interesting that I didn't realize when I took that picture and painted that painting that actually that was his grandfather's house until but he saw it in the gallery. This really is <clears throat> beautiful. Uh, the getting back to that other painting that you had before. Yes. <laughs> How long did it take you to do that? That one took uh, several hours, I think maybe 20 to 30 hours. But that long? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now this painting here, the clearing, uh, probably took 30 to 40 also, but it didn't take the amount of time and length of time that the acrylic paintings were taking, which like I said was over 100 hours. These are much more immediate, much quicker to use because the oil is a uh, much more fluid medium doesn't dry quickly, has a lot of play to it. You know, you can go now, back Now, since you were so readily able to answer me, yes. like how long, I take it every time you start and finish something, you write it down, now I worked an hour, now I worked. I do. You, you do I that. I keep track of it. Why? So, I'm mean, curious to see how long they take. So oh, that's why I do it. And for years, people would always ask me, how long did that take you to paint it? And I never really knew. I'd have to sort of guess. And so I decided. Well, most painters, I don't think they they I don't think so time either. themselves. No. Because they just go with the inspiration. <laughs> right. 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 So now, we're back to an abstract, Judy. Yes. yes. Another uh, yes. something <coughs> that looks almost like the backdrop. 
<laughs> well, it would make a great backdrop in somebody's <laughs> living room, don't you think? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, now what is the name of that? This is called Toto O Nada, All or Nothing. And uh, it was. Toto O Nada, oh, that's in not, Spanish? Yes, in Spanish. Yes. Toto O Nada, All or Nothing. All or Nothing. And it was inspired actually by um, when I was riding the train one morning, the subway train. Subway. What's yeah. a subway? I'm right. only kidding. <laughs> and you know how uh, people scratch things into the glass. You know, sometimes you see like a lot of gang insignia or people scratch words or whatever. People I actually... used to call that graffiti. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> Without the spray cans, but yeah. just on the glass, yes. So I had seen um, scratchings and somebody had done a circle with a cross through it and there were a lot of other things happening with it and so that's what inspired me to do this particular piece as you can see there's an, a circle that goes around it it's divided into four uh, segments yes and it's it's more of a spiritual piece that talks about the completion uh, of the circle and did you actually started doing that in the subway no you not even the sketch? Just a sketch, yes, just the a sketch. sketch. Just a sketch, yes, yes, I did the mm -hmm. sketch, absolutely. Well, you could, you could uh, present this to the uh, transit authority, authority and they could, yes, and they probably could, they have beautiful paintings and things in the hallway. They, it's really very nice, right. not like it used to be. Right, right. So they could put that up there. Yes, and they... See, I just... Uh, I know, thank you. Gave you an idea. Yes, you did. And... Uh, and they have a bil uh, billion dollar surplus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take 10%. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so um, most, a lot of the... T uh, the um, excuse me, the abstracts that I was doing around this time were um, pretty much just a spiritual exploration for me. Um, it gives just, you a big satisfaction. Yes, absolutely. But also I was basing uh, some of my spirituality in the natural world and so I was trying to put, like the previous piece, the Georgica piece, again was about landscape, sky, <coughs> earth, and these, this also, this piece here has those elements too to it. So what happens is that somehow you feel an inspiration, something yes. comes over you and says, okay, I want to express myself, and then you go to the canvas and you start yes. doing that. That's very interesting. Yes, yeah, so with the abstract, sometimes they're planned. Sometimes I have an idea in my uh, mind as to what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Other times, like you said, I just start with a blank canvas and see what develops, what happens with that. So it's either approach, it's either approach. Yes. So you have been working with uh, oil and uh, what was that? Other? This is collage. It's also, um, most of it's acrylic paint based. Acrylic and oil. And paper. Uh, this has Conti crayon in it, Conti crayon. Mm -hmm. uh, other pieces have uh, pencil. Um, oh, you have pencil also? In, inscribe words. I'll write words into them. There's an artist by the name of Cy Twombly. I sort of admire his work. Um, and uh, incorporated some of his elements into my pieces also. And uh, you're a graphic artist. Yes, also, graphic and designer. And that's something entirely different than this. D different, but I think that um, people say that some of the pieces do look very graphic, that they can tell that there are, there is structure to them, that there's structure now, like graphic design. this is something you do on the computer or yes. by hand? on the computer. On the computer. On the computer, yes. And who uses those things? Well, I work for, I have a number of different clients. I used to work for Rockefeller University in Manhattan. I was an art director for them for in-house publications, newsletters, journals, uh, special events and things such as that. Uh, I also now work um, uh, for myself. I work for Fordham University. I also have other clients that I work for. Um, I'll be doing the uh, Farms and Fields for the Baconic Land Trust this year their invitation package, so um, things are moving when along really well. When you talk about these corporations, it's something they have like a publication and you yes. put uh, the graphic arts in, in the publication. Well, design the publication. Design it. Right, mm -hmm. different pieces. Uh, Fordham has a lot of pieces that they do, newsletters, bulletins, all sorts mm -hmm. of things that that particular department that I'm working with right now are directing and designing. Very so we interesting. A, yes, yes. Really? Yeah, so every day is and pretty creative, Judy. Do you, do you also have any uh, private 
clients, like somebody, yes. not corporations, like private. Yes, uh, Peconic Land Trust is one. I'm doing mm -hmm. um, a identity piece for uh, my friend Wayne Schwartz and his store, his business. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing their identity. I have a number of several other people that I've worked for and done other things mm -hmm. for also. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if you've been wondering what this little box is doing here. Yes, what is that? Isn't that cute? That's very cute. I keep names here. Okay. And this is like the special feature in the, my show. It's called a trivia. Okay. You're showing a, a picture uh, over there. Not you, but the people who are watching. If they could identify the picture and the people in it, they should write to me. And I put the names in here. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I haven't decided whether the end of the year or the beginning of the year. My guest is going to draw a name, right. and that's going to be my next guest. Okay. So I'm waiting for people to uh, write in, and as you could see, there's quite a few. But maybe I'll just wait till it fills up. So that's what this is. <laughs> and. Uh, Believe it or not, half hour is almost up, although we could talk more. You could have brought more pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you could have brought some of those graphic uh, things also. Yes, yes. Well, next time I'll do that. Next time. Next time, yes. And uh, I want to thank you for coming on my show and so I could get to know you better. Thank you, Judy. My and, pleasure. Uh, and everybody else who helped me with this show, I'd like to thank the underwriters and the crew. And uh, to finish this, would you like to dance or sing a song? <laughs> 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 Do you have any talents in that oh. area? <laughs> Not in nope. singing, no. But no. I did theater for many years. We didn't even talk about no, that. No, we didn't the talk about theater. that. Yes, well, no, I remember I did ask you. Well, okay. Okay, so the that's music. All right. Bye, bye, everybody. Go wave to the people. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. This is the end. This is the end. <laughs> I remember asking you to appear in my show. That's really? right. Yes. Remember I that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.